later. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have a- Why is this kind of scary? Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. What is going on? This is crazy. Now, please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. Don't tell me what to do. The current time? 12, 14 p.m. I can't do p.m. That's, that's the vibe. No p.m. Oh, you have to actually move it down for p.m. Wait, why does it want to know what time it is? How's it going, everyone? Remote Bry, the one and only. And today we're playing Stanley Parable. And how do I know we're playing that? Because it, it tells me at the very top, you are playing the Stanley Parable. Ultra Deluxe Pro. Max. Plus. A few people recommended this game. I think I'll probably post their their comments over here somewhere, maybe. And then I looked at the Steam reviews, mostly positive. It was like, like whatever the highest thing is, like highly positive or whatever. Decided I'd give it a shot, you know, just check it out. You guys seem to like these puzzle games. I feel like, okay, so I feel like indie games are slept on, but then I feel like indie puzzle games are slept on, right? Here's my theory. And so then there's like all these people who love these games, but a lot of people don't even know they exist or they'll they'll know it exists and they'll be like oh that's lame that sucks it's not call of duty oh my god where's the madden oh this is terrible oh 2k oh game of the year it's like what are we talking about we're missing out on gems like this where we get to actually just experience something new isn't that the whole reason we play games to experience things that we haven't experienced already or can't experience in real life This game is fire! <laughs> I didn't even play it yet. It's, I'm just like, yo, this game, we need this game in our lives. But anyway, uh, <laughs> well, then, oh, uh, finishing my outro, uh, <laughs> or finishing the intro, whoops. Finishing the outro to the intro. That's what we're, we're finishing the outro to the intro because we already did the remote bri thing. So now we got to do the like, subscribe, comment, share thing. <laughs> It's 12, 18 p.m. Hang on, hang on. Before we get started, can I just say something? Bro, what? Thank you for actually setting the clock both times you booted the game. A lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at, <laughs> at 12 and call it a day. <laughs> but you're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's how I know that you care about this experience. You're paying attention. I mean, I, I didn't want to say it, but I don't even have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. OK, what's good? Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see this screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time. You've earned it. That's what I'm talking about. See, I already love this game already. Restarted the game, set the clock again, and I get rewarded for it. Now I can put in my favorite time. I don't. I don't think I have a favorite time. All right, I'll let you get back to the video game now. The end is never the end is never the end. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Okay. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Okay, nice. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders okay. Came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although how many years? Considered it soul-ending. 
Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Okay, as long as he was happy, you know? As long as he was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. What? Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. What? No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Huh. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk. Oh, this is us. Out of his office. I hate Mondays. My controller keeps not wanting to control. Should I just plug it in? Man, I thought we lived in the 21st century. I was really out here thinking we lived in the 21st century. That's crazy. But now I got to plug my controller in like a Neanderthal. So much effort to play this game just because you guys when wanted Stan me to. When came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I see what they're trying to do. I see what they're trying to do. And it's honestly an unwinnable situation. He said he went through the door on his left. So if I go through that door, I'm just doing what I was told. But he's using reverse psychology, I think, to make me go through the door on the right. Because I'm like, I didn't go through the door on the left. I went through the door on the right. And then he'll be like, I knew I knew that's what you were going to do. I don't like this. Should I go through the left door or the right door? Uh, we'll go through. Um, you know what? We'll listen. We'll go through the left. We'll go the left. We'll go left. You got us. Oh, we can crouch. Can we jump? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Probably not. So I think they're all just playing a trick on Stanley and... That's it. Size of demographic teenagers. A lot of percentage. <laughs> we need we need more, <laughs> but they crossed it out. We need less reviews. 402 plus 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule. But I think it's a stupid idea. More water coolers, <laughs> more water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. I approve. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. What do people want? Things, money, more money, things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs, graphs about things and money. What is hot? Profits, profits, profits. Colored in segment, yes, you gotta have a colored in segment. Stripes, you gotta have a stripe segment, very important. Very important segment to have. Solving interpersonal conflict. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined, blah, 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 I need to read better out loud. What are your dreams for the future? Nature, success, transcend, lunch, travel, metamorphosis, comatose, clear skin, spring break, less air, less air. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less, do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expectation of promotion or recognition and don't get fired. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. Let it all ball up inside you. Resent coworkers for you not supporting. Oh wait, I'm reading it backwards, whatever. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. Ew. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Number of slides on this slide. Slides, charts, charts, and slides. Okay. Rate at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. Rate of increased, rate of increase in graphs and slides. Please, no more charts. I'm begging. The boss appreciation minute. <laughs> Top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out triplicate and whatever. Solving, okay, we just, <laughs> okay. To do, synergize, core value expenditures, shift global market per end, monetize free to play. Reminds me of Overwatch and the travesty that is that game currently. Broom closet, can you stop closing the doors after me? 
That's not cool. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I don't want to just keep listening to him every time. We're going to go downstairs. What is this, hell? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to leave. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? What? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun. What? He marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? <laughs> now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people, it's looping. Dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This <laughs> voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Okay. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. I I'm speechless Everything right now. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Nope. <laughs> You're still in this mess. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have a... Why is this kind of scary? Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. What is going on? This is crazy. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? What happened to Stanley? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. 
She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. Okay. A particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Stanley. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. <laughs> I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Okay, facts. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Okay, I feel that she a little bit. The meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. I'm not mad at those series of events. Is this her? Are we playing as her? Or is this Stanley? Wait, no, 472. That was Stanley, right? Wait. Wait. Wait, let me get this straight. <laughs> let me get this straight right now. What you're saying is based on the doors and stuff we go through or don't go through is going to affect like how we play the game. That's why it said the end is never the end is never the end is never the end. So I'm going to keep playing this. And I have to I assume I'm going to lose every time, so I'm going to keep playing it lose and have to figure out which path is the right path through you know the process of elimination and eventually get to what may be the a legitimate ending because i guess technically we could say it ended okay well um well i guess we're doing this all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. And so is everything else different? I'm going to check those boards. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I'll do that again this time. Maybe next time it'll be different just because I want to see the board, um, the board room. I want to see if that looks the same. Yet there was not a single person here. Tips for not getting fired. Feeling a wave of That's the same. Stanley decided to go up to his boss. This office. is the same. I'd find an answer there. This is the same. Okay. So all of that is the same. So if we go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This is crazy. Nice office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, two eight four five but of course stanley couldn't possibly have known this <laughs> two eight four five got it we'll do we'll listen man yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad <laughs> stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck hey he stepped into the newly opened passageway okay what what, what passage oh Okay, Stanley, I see you. This man, Stanley, is a goat. Loading. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. Okay. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Okay. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Mm. 
but that says escape mind control facility what if I want to escape? I feel like the game is only going to progress if I do exactly what he tells me to. But for the sake of entertainment, I'm going to hit up escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. All right. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. No, we're, we got it. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted <laughs> effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Let's get it. Let's get it, Stanley. The big Stan. Stan Daddy. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. What? Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this no to his brief and shallow life. No, Stanley, I'm sorry, bro. Stanley, I'm sorry, man. Oh, no. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator. What? Helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. Killing him instantly. And is that what? What? The Stanley Parable. Hey, I got my name in the lights. Two minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Stanley, this is blowing my mind. So Stanley was dead from the moment he hit start because his whole life was just following orders. So he was alive, but he wasn't living. This game is fire. Man, can you guys recommend something else, please? Like everything has been like a hit. Uh, it was super liminal. And then now this, oh, super liminal and this. And then viewfinder is about to drop. Man, this. This is crazy. Wait, this is the office layout? So is this my office? Then I leave. Stanley's there. Stanley's there, there. And then we get to the two doors, and then it's all blank. We don't know what happens after the two doors. Filing cabinets. Office computers. And we can turn them off. And turn them hose off. Save some power. What? You're out here wasting power and whatnot. Can we interact with this? Nope, 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 nope. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Understood. I feel it. Okay, nice. We got some paintings and whatnot, or photographs maybe. So there's, now there's more ways to go. The lounge. An early version of the lounge. So what's in here? What the hell is that? Oh, it's the clock. I'm like, what? Trailers. We ran four major teaser trailers over the course of the game's development, each meant to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one, released on May 2012. It shows a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing viewers that he is repairing a new version of the Stanley Parable. 
Oh, and I missed it. Whoops. Sorry. Oh, wait. Okay. Can I watch it? Like, watch it, watch it? Okay, that's fine. The game is now paused. Begin the game again. Resume the game. Option, return to menu. For a long time, we had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Unfortunately, very few players realized this is what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everybody. <laughs> Makes sense. I'd be frustrated. Is there like, can we run? Can we, can we sprint? I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Countdown desk. One of the desks from an early version of the countdown ending. Monitor room elevator. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up and down or wait. So it's just letting me, this is telling me how the, the original version of the game used to play. Is that what's going on? Justice forever. Stanley stood on the snow. <laughs> Narrator outtakes. <laughs> Kevin Brighting. Is it Brighting? Yeah. Kevin Brighting, the voice of the narrator, recorded dialogue for the entire game roughly three separate times over the two years of development. These are clips from early takes that were not used in the final game. Oh, that's dope. That's cool that you'd put those in here. The lounge. Okay, so we're just in the Hall of Fame right now. Is that is that what we're that's what we're doing? That's how we're rocking? Hall of Fame status. Okay, so Stanley Parable. So do we have to go in there? Okay, fine. <laughs> What's good? Oh look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Is this a is this a thumbnail I'm seeing or I'm like, whoa, this is fire. The Stanley Parable. All right, lady narrator. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. No. Time choose for you. Don't let time... Can I quit now? Ha <laughs> ha! Got him! Ha <laughs> ha! Are you good, Stanley? No hard feelings. This is the story of a man named Stan. Okay, so they both need each other. So what she was saying is the narrator needs Stanley to listen to him and Stanley needs the narrator to be listened to. All of his co-workers were gone. We get that. What could it mean? Okay, so this time we're going to go through the right door. We're going to go through the right door and see what's good. When Stan no. came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I mean, why not? Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. <laughs> it had really been worth the detour after all. Just to spend, but eager to get back to business. Aw, I went too fast. I went too fast, my bad. I wanted to hear what he had to say. What's that way? I could go that way or this way? This way looks dope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Okay. Appreciate it. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Go on. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult. Facts. The fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I'll say you're jealous. Someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Asking for her? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Nah, I'm good. She's been waiting. Nah. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. Uh, if you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Nah, we out. Skrrr! 
wait, what? I can't open the door? Come on, bro. That's crazy. Can I just let it ring? What? What do you want? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. What's good, girl? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? Yeah? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. That we need each other? Side. Let me show you what's really going on here. Stan. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. No, I'm gonna push B or A. No, I don't want to push Y. Okay, so I don't listen to him, and now he's gonna force me to listen to him. Got it. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told yep. to do. Who would have thought? Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. A, X. Down, crouch, anything but why? But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Hmm, that's interesting. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. Okay. The thought excited him terribly. It excited him? Press Y to spend time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Press B to prepare dinner? As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Tell my wife I love her. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Um... Is he talking about me? And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. I'm not going to do it. But it wants me to do it. Oh, I hate this game. <laughs> I hate this. No. 
come on come on for real you can see like the green screen in my teeth okay fine we'll push the button you see can he just not hear me how can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? You can't. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps... Well... Maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Um... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so what we're gonna do, here's what we'll do. Just because I, I'm, I'm curious to see what will happen. I'm gonna listen to everything he tells me to do and I'm just gonna do everything he says. I'm just gonna play the game as he narrates it and I wanna see what happens because if something doesn't happen then i know i can't trust him you know if he's like and then stanley went and lived a magnificent life and now i'm in prison i'll be like oh okay so you're an op <laughs> you're 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 an opponent you're the opposition now we're not we're not the same we're not a team we're not homies it's on sight when stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left yet there was not a single person here either <laughs> stepping into his manager's office stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life two eight four five but of course stanley couldn't possibly have known this stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck amazing he stepped into the newly opened passageway. And then he went downstairs. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Facts. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Of course. It's Stanley. Young Stan. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Up oh, two people, they got fired. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? He had. Is this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? Yep. That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yep. No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control. Mine. Never. His life is in my hands. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content walking eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life for he would dismantle the controls once and for all okay stanley facility power that's where we're going Five. Um, nom nom. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. And when at last he found the sword. Off. I don't even want to hear it.
blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Facts. Was it over? Of course not. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. But? And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? Not my concern. Other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. Exactly. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. Okay. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. All right, Stanley, you ready? Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Nice. Shout out to Stanley. Wait, I beat the game? There's no way that's it. I break bread with my team. I put that cash in a pond. I slide down a block. Can't drive off till I'm done. Block on waste all safe. That's how we move where I'm from. Candy pain Lambo, I hear reverse and I'm gone. I break bread with my team, I put that cash in a palm.